here at the International Desk where we bring you the world up to the minute. I'm Linda Kincaid, happening right now at the iDesk. A new video from ISIS shows American-made M16s and heavy machine guns, but how did they get them? And plans to take an Iraqi city back from ISIS. The new US Defense Secretary is speaking out. And get ready for Hollywood's big night. Will tomorrow's Oscar ceremony push the envelope? All those details right here, right now at the iDesk. Live from CNN Center, you're at the International Desk. As much of the world tries to stop their reign of terror, ISIS militants are giving us a look at some of its arsenal. ISIS claims it seized this stockpile from a military outpost in western Iraq. They include American-made M16s and heavy machine guns. They say they've also made off with Humvees and armoured vehicles. We don't know when these videos were taken or even if they're authentic. ISIS is probably bracing for a showdown in the north. Iraqi troops are said to be training for a military offensive to try to retake the city of Mosul, probably in late April or early May. But the new US Pentagon chief says being ready to win is more important than sticking to a time frame. On a trip to Afghanistan, Ashton Carter, Carter was asked whether the US would be sending ground troops back into Iraq. Here's what he said. That is one that will be Iraqi-led and U.S.-supported. And uh, it's important that it uh, be launched at a time when it can succeed. And so I think the important thing is that it'll it get done when, when it can be done successfully. Um, and I, I, even if I knew exactly when that was going to be, I wouldn't tell you. And we're checking with CNN's Ben Wiedemann in northern Iraq in just a moment. But here's a story just into CNN. The head spokesman for Nigeria's military says government forces have retaken the town of Baga from Boko Haram. The terror group captured the northern town during an assault in early January. Many witnesses say that attack was the worst atrocity Boko Haram has committed. Let's bring in CNN's Christian Purefoy. He joins us now on the line from Lagos, Nigeria. Christian, uh, some reports initially said as many people as many as 2,000 people died when that attack happened. Can you tell us what the situation is now? What's the latest? Hi, Linda. Well, as you said, the Nigerian military put out a statement saying that after fierce fighting and many casualties, they have now recaptured the town of Baga. Um, it was a joint attack by land, um, by land forces and um, air forces. The... Um, the, the problem is we don't have much more of a clue of exactly how and what happened. Um, and just as you mentioned, the, the atrocities, one of the worst atrocities in Baga um, before in early January when Boko Haram attacked it, we don't have much of an idea what that worst atrocity actually meant either because this, this uh, conflict is very is, is far up in the north, very isolated, no journalists are allowed there. It's incredibly dangerous for anyone to go. But this town is important. It was um, a, a moral, not a moral, it was a, a propaganda victory, sorry, um, for Boko Haram when they took it. It was an important border town. Um, and as you said, this, this news of the atrocity that came out, um, maybe Amnesty International was saying up to 2,000 people would have been killed. Um, but the Human Rights Watch certainly put out satellite images saying, uh, showing a vast devastation of, of, of the town. But it has now been recaptured. We don't have an exact number on figures. I'm sure the Nigerian military will be claiming this as uh, their own propaganda victory now against Boko Haram. Linda. And Christian, Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon and Niger recently formed a military coalition against the Islamist militants. Is there any indication whether any other countries were involved in this? Again, this is one of the, the problems, and it's very uh, unclear, but certainly there's uh, at least two nationalities, two different armies operating in that region. There's the Nigerian military and Chad, um, and also maybe the Niger military. This, this sort of uh, coalition of um, armies got together in the last few months, promised uh, up to eight, $80 million in funding to fight and up to 8,700 troops to fight Boko Haram 
in that region because this is really where Boko Haram is based, in that northeast of Nigeria Borno state. That's where they've been carrying out their attacks, capturing territory uh, and committing some of you know, their, their worst atrocities. It's not clear if there were other um, uh, coalition partners, if you like, involved in this particular attack, but they are certainly operating in the same region. And all of that does seem to be uh, having quite an effect because this, this follows on from another Nigerian military statement, Linda, saying uh, the Nigerian military have now captured up to 11 communities, pushed Boko Haram further. And certainly the news coming out of Chad and the reports from there show that advances are being made. That does not mean that Boko Haram is any way uh, defeated, Linda. They, they uh, continue to attack villages uh, elsewhere. This is a, a guerrilla group, if you like, and they can very quickly let go of the territory that they've captured, Linda. Okay, Christian Purefoy, we will talk to you soon as more information comes to hand. Thanks for joining us.